Now, Rod, I don't think you've been to West Virginia this way, have you? No, I've came in through the Tazewell side, coming in that way, through Bluefield and up, so. Okay, so this is the first time you've gone through the tunnel. Yes. Right. It'll be an experience for you. Okay. Somewhere in the middle is where the state line is. Okay. In fact, I think this is one of only two tunnels, I believe, that crosses the state line, the other one being down at Cumberland Gap. Mm -hmm. Kind of eerie feeling in this place too. <laughs> and that's one long tunnel too. Wow, I say so. I think I see daylight at the other end. I think I see West Virginia. Is yeah. that okay? Daylight, wild, <laughs> wild, wonderful West Virginia. Indeed. And on the way to Philippi, which is still a, what they say a fur piece from here. Mm -hmm. Here we are. There's the sun. Well, first thing we need to do, Steve, is tell people out there that this has nothing to do with any kind of mummies found in Egypt and brought to Appalachia. This is about an occurrence that took place in Appalachia in a town called Philippi. And Philippi is located where? Well, it's up in central West Virginia. Yeah, not Damn. too far from Weston. And so this is where our story is going to begin, uh, talking about this mysterious embalming process discovered by this farmer almost a century and a half ago. That's just unreal. Well, this is a very famous story. Folks go up there to actually visit these mummies. Yes, you can go see them and maybe even get your picture taken with them Wow! if you're so inclined to do so. But it's a very, very interesting story, a very unusual tale from the town of Philippi, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Now, Philippi Rod, with around 2,500 residents, is... Um, Actually, best known is the site of the first land battle of the Civil War. I didn't know if you knew that. I did not know that, no. Well, today, we're not diving into war. We're diving into a story that gained fame on the Internet for a much more ghoulish reason. Now, if you make the trip to Philippi, you'll find tucked inside the Barber County Historical Society Museum two mummies with an extraordinarily strange history. Philippi is a quaint little town with a rich history. It's a place where the past feels, well, very much alive with its historic buildings, old cemeteries, and, of course, the Barber County Historical Society Museum. That museum is a treasure trove of local history, but it's the mummies, not mommies. It's the mummies that are there, and they are the star attraction. They draw curious visitors from all over, eager to hear the bizarre tale of, well, how they got there. So let's go and rewind back to the 1800s and introduce the man behind the mummies, not his mommy, but the mummies, Graham H. Hamrick. And Rod, our story begins with that man, Graham H. Hamrick, who was born on September 18, 1821 in Rappahannock County, Virginia. As a boy, he and his family moved to Rockingham County, and on April 16, 1844, Graham married Margaret Whitmer, and they lived in Rockingham County for 13 years. In 1857, Graham moved to a farm on the Elk River and remained there for 10 years before moving to the farm of Joshua S. Quarter on Hackers Creek. Three years later, he bought a small farm on the same creek where he spent the remainder of his life and passed away on February 11, 1899. He was a member of the Primitive Baptist Church and fathered eight children. But what really sets him apart in history, Rod, is his discovery of an embalming process that could preserve vegetables, hmm. meats, 
and even human bodies for an unknown length of time. Hamrick wasn't an educated man, though, but he'd studied the Bible fervently. He claimed to have discovered his embalming process within its pages. He had never heard of the ancient Egyptian mummies, which makes his discovery all the more fascinating, and thank goodness he never saw the old mummy movies, probably, too. Hamrick started his experiments by immersing green ears of corn, tomatoes, and other perishable vegetables in a fluid he concocted from the information he found in the Bible. This fluid, when pure, was as clear as water. He kept his secret to himself, experimenting for 20 years just to get it right. He eventually moved on to preserving small animals and then pieces of meat. And his success made him eager to try his method on a human body. In February 1888, he embalmed a deceased newborn and then the severed head of an African-American man. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, these remains have since vanished, adding a bit of mystery to the story. But those early experiments were just the beginning for Hamrick. He wanted to prove his method could work on a complete human body. And with the assistance of Judge Samuel Woods, Hamrick managed to obtain legal permission to acquire two bodies of female inmates from the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum in Weston and was allowed to experiment on them for 40 days in isolation. After these 40 days, the officers and doctors of the asylum inspected the bodies and found them perfectly preserved with no signs of decomposition. This was a monumental moment for Hamrick as it validated his years of hard work and experimentation. Well, with the proof of his success, Hamrick applied for a patent for his embalming process. However, the application was rejected at first. The patent office, claiming that the fluid described in his formula, couldn't produce the results that he claimed. Well, undeterred, Hamrick offered to demonstrate his process in, well, of all places, Washington, D.C., this offer was accepted, and he took the two mummies from Weston to Washington, D.C., along with a certificate from the asylum officers confirming the date of their embalming. On the appointed day and in front of several officials, including a representative from that famous Smithsonian Institution, Hamrick embalmed another body. The demonstration was a success, and he was granted a patent without any further questions. And Rod Hamrick received an offer from the Smithsonian of $10,000, which, and I did the math on this one this time, $345,000 in today's money to use his process. However, revealing his mummification methods was a condition for the deal, and Mr. Hamrick chose not to do so. So the mummies came back to Philippi with Graham Hamrick. On December 24th, 1891... Christmas Eve, Hamrick was elected an honorary member of the Paris Inventors Academy of France and was awarded a bronze medal, later a gold medal, all without any expense to him. Now, despite his decades of work on developing this embalming technique, Hamrick never made much money from it. You see, he lacked the business know-how to capitalize on his patent. He did sell rights to use his fluid in various parts of the U.S., but his health failed and as he neared the end of his life, he prepared embalming fluid for his own body and instructed his friends on its use. Hamrick died from consumption on February 11, 1899, during an intense cold spell, with temperatures below zero for several days. Well, despite being exposed to the elements, the fluid he prepared did not freeze. He was buried at Mary's Chapel Cemetery, five miles north of Philippi. While their creator was gone, the two mummified ladies of Philippi were far from retirement, though. They toured Europe for years as a part of the P.T. Barnum Circus Sideshow, attracting crowds from all across the continent. But soon, folks grew tired of the mummies, as they became yesterday's news, and then they were returned to Philippi. The mummies were forgotten for years, only to be discovered later, of all places, in an old barn. 
a local resident took ownership of them, reportedly keeping them under his bed for some time. It gets even more interesting, though, Rod. All right. In the 1990s, a flood swept through Philippi, leaving the mummies, yes, waterlogged and covered in fungus. Wow. Thankfully, a local man was able to clean and preserve them, and those two mummies now reside at the Barber County Historical Museum, where they continue to fascinate visitors. And, folks, if you visit... You just might be able to get a selfie with the ladies. Wow. And this was all done from notes he took from the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this had nothing to do with formaldehyde. Anything like that. I mean, this was all natural stuff. Supposedly natural, the way it was supposed to be. And yet it preserved them like it did. That's just unreal. But I can also see, too, he did not want to have certain secrets or certain things taken away from him that he had rightfully created, and that being, of course, with the mummification process. That's a shame he wasn't able to profit from all that. Right. I mean, this is a lot of work, and it's not like, you know, I'm determined to be um, a famous baseball player or right. I'm determined to be an inventor of something other than this. Mm-hmm. This is, I want to work with dead bodies yeah, and keep them preserved, and that's... Kudos to him for doing that. It's just a shame that that secret passed away with him, unfortunately. You know, and and also we talk about this too. Um, it takes somebody special. And I'm going to say this honestly. It takes somebody special, or at least that has a good heart, or at least their mind set in the right place, to become a funeral director. To have to deal with embalming people because uh, it's something that's just not on my radar. I don't want to do that. I've been to one former funeral place in North Carolina. Actually, it was the Anson County Chamber of Commerce building. That's what they had. But it used to be the old funeral parlor. And I actually saw the um, uh, actually saw the uh, operating table, if you want to call it that, that they tilted you at. And then they drew all your body or blood out of your body. And then they put the formaldehyde in the body. And that's just like, no, nope, this is not my not my cup of tea. But this sounds like it's a more... To me, it's almost a more civilized way of, you know, preserving someone uh, for the dead. So, we've seen the mummies. We've seen them. What do you think about them? Well, I'd say for this part of the country, it was big news. Yeah. Uh, Then being showcased to the rest of the world, it was big news coming from a place like here. And uh, just amazing, though, looking at them. Well, you don't think they're 144 or some years old. No, you, you know? don't. So that's the amazing part about this. And that, folks, is the story of the Philippine mummies. Another one of the stories of Appalachia. Thanks for watching. Y'all take care. Till next we meet, so long, everybody.